Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Alex and in this session we're going to build a simple rate limiter using Spring Boot and Redis. So the idea is that whenever we build APIs that are publicly available, we somehow want to limit the amount of requests in any given interval. So what we're going to build today is such a simple API with only one endpoint and we want to make sure that there is at most three requests every 10 seconds. There are multiple ways to achieve this, but we're going to use Redis because it offers expiration. So that means whenever we put something into Redis, we can also specify an expiration time and then the record is gone. And this really helps when it comes to these time bound restrictions that we impose on the clients. Of course, there's no free lunch and you don't have to use Redis necessarily, but if you're familiar with it and you have it in your stack already, then this might be a nice alternative. So we will have the one endpoint and use a handler filter function to take care of adding the restrictions and checking them in Redis. So with that said, let's code. As usual, we are in the IDE and let's briefly take a look at the build funds. So I'm using Spring Boot 250 and you can see there are really not many dependencies that we need. We're gonna use Webflux, so that's there. And then for the Redis communication, we need Spring Boot Starter Data Redis and then we have to pick one of the drivers for, for Redis. So there's actually Jettis and there's Lattice. And as you can see, we're gonna use Lattice for this tutorial. So let's go to the application and connect to Redis. So I'm not going into the details of how you can install Redis. I have a server running in the background already. So what we're gonna do next is configure the connection factory and then also the Redis template and then see if everything works. So let's go. The first thing that we need is the connection factory. Uh, we're going to use the Redis connection factory. Um, Redis, so that's going to give us a Redis connection factory. And the configuration is pretty straightforward. So we have the Redis connection factory and then we need a Redis standalone configuration because there's just this one server running on my local machine. Uh, and that's localhost and port is 6379. That's it for the Redis connection factory already. And the next thing that we're gonna need is the Redis template. So let's build that Redis template. Um, and yeah, now we have to decide on how we actually store the data. So the idea is that we ask clients to provide an API key and we use that API key to impose the restrictions. So we can say that API key now cannot further perform any more requests. Um, so that's gonna be a string. And then we just count the number of requests within that 10 second interval. So we have a string and the int. So the key is the string and the int is the value that we're gonna store. So we have to specify that here already. So that's the template. And now we can return the Redis template that's string int. I'm using apply to configure it now a little bit because we have to provide the connection factory and that's the Redis connection factory. And this is pretty much the whole configuration already. So let's see if that works. So we can use the command line runner. Command line. So then we're going to use the Redis template and then we use ops for value and we say set a key and a key is test and the value is one, two, three. And let's also put an expiration already because that's using a duration. So we can say duration, let's see. import this first and then it's a duration of seven seconds. So we are gonna write this one key and value. But before we do this, let's also add a logger. Just making sure we see what's going on. Because there's not much to see here. Oh, yeah, so just making sure this works. So let me run this application real quick. So we can see it's done, everything has worked. 
So what we use now is a terminal. And let me split that already so we can see a bit more because we're gonna need two of them. So I can use the Redis CLI at this point. And now let me list the keys. And it's empty because I probably wasn't fast enough. Uh, I already specified 10 or seven seconds expiration. It wasn't fast enough. So let me just stop the application, then run it again. And that will be a bit faster. So there we can see there's one of the keys. So um, before we go into the format, let's just check. And it's empty already because the seven seconds have already passed. So now this looks a little bit weird. Um, and this is because with this current configuration, we are using the standard Java serializer, I guess, for the keys. So we can change that because we're only interested in having test, which is the key that I specified. So let's go back to the configuration of the Redis template. And we can specify a key serializer, and that's a Redis serializer string. It's already like configured the way we need it. So I can specify that now. Um, for run this again, let me just clean everything up. And if we run the application now again, that should look better already. So let's see. Making sure I'm fast enough. Keys. And uh, we see test is there. This is the key that we would have expected. So the connection to Redis is working. And the next thing that we're gonna build is the API. So let me close the terminal. And let's see. Um, I'm not gonna put any everything in the same file. Let me just create a new one. Um, so we're gonna go with a new, how do we call this? API handler. That's a class, it's a component. And there's just one function really. That's expecting the request. So we'll request. We have to return a mono server response. So, and what we're gonna do is, let's ping on, whenever someone is pinging the server, we just return a pong. So that's okay. Um, say content type is text plain. And the body is using one of the body inserters. I'll check the body inserters um, from value. So let's a little bit room here. Um, so we can see server response okay. Content type is text plain, and the body is just text pong. So that's the API uh, the API handler already, and now we also need to provide a route so we know what we have to use to connect to that API handler. Let's go back to the application. There it is. And now we build the routes. So route, um, it's gonna need the API handler so we can directly map it. What else do we need? Um, nothing at this point. So router function server response. And there we go. So return router functions. And we provide one route, which is get. Uh, that doesn't work the way I want. So request predicate um, get import. Uh, let me see which one it is. It's probably this one. Request predicate get, and then we say slash API. No, oh, not API, but ping. And we map this to the API ping function. So something's still not quite right. Yeah, we have a mistake here. Check that. So now this looks better. So now whenever a request to slash ping is performed, we just map this to the handler function that we have just defined. All right, let's see if that works already. I'm removing this beam because it's no longer needed. Let me stop the application and just make sure that we run it again. So that's running. Uh, let's go to the terminal. I'm gonna leave that here for now. So I'm using HTTP localhost 8080 
pin. Let's check that. And we get the palm back. Uh, we get a HTTP 200, which is just what we expected. So everything works fine up until this point. And now the next thing that we're gonna do is introduce the filter that's now making sure that there's only a certain number of requests per 10 seconds that we allow to proceed. So I'm stopping the application again. And then let's go to the other file and then we define our filter here. So component and we call that rate limiter. Uh, what it needs is the Redis template. Um, Redis. Jeez, Redis template string int. And that should be it, I guess. Yeah. So that's the handler filter function server response. Server response. That's not that important. We just add this and then there we are. And we have to implement the filter function. And so, how we're gonna do this? So, we first define the limit. And the limit is how many requests per 10 seconds. So the limit specifies how many requests per 10 seconds we will allow. And of course this can be configurable, but I just picked three for this example. So let's see what we need. Um, as I said, we need um, an API key so we know where we can impose the limit upon. So let's assume that the API key is passed as part of a query parameter. That usually can also be a header, which makes more sense, but it's easier to now test this here. So let me just define a param, and we say request query param, and we name this API key. So that gives me an optional, because we don't know whether that's available. So I can say if param is empty, so the API key has not been provided, we return a server response and with a status that is unauthorized because the key is missing and built. So now whenever someone uses that endpoint without specifying the API key and HTTP 401 will be returned. So, but now we assume the key is there so we can invoke param get and that will give us the key. And now we check Redis at this point, Redis, ops for where you got. So we check in Redis whether for this key there's already a count. Uh, um, we're gonna use that going forward. So if that count does not yet exist, so it's null, then we make sure that we create it. So we use ops for value and then we say set if absent and we put in the key and then we provide the first value. So that's the first request, so we specify one, and we say this has an expiration of 10 seconds. Um, let's import that. So that's the record already. Uh, of value is not right, of seconds, that should be right. So, and then we also, since we are in the filter, we have to continue with the request um, we have to call next handle request because then the request can just proceed. So, but now if the count is already there, we have to check if we have hit the limit already. So what we're gonna do is uh, can just wrap this and put return if the count larger than limit it shouldn't be larger than limit actually but better safe than sorry um, and we return a server response uh, with a status um, too many requests and built so that's the case when we have reached the limit and else everything's good so we just increase the current counter ops for value uh, we can use the increment and provide the key. So we just count up. And then we also again have to handle current request. And that's pretty much is all there is to it. So just to recap, we check if there's a count already. If not, we set it to one. 
if this is account already, we check if we have hit the limit. And if we did hit the limit, we just don't allow the request to proceed. And if we didn't hit the limit yet, then we will just increment the count of the request for that API key. So the next thing that we have to do is register the limiter in our API routes. So let's go to the application. And then we have to go to the router functions router. And then we just add the filter. Of course, we need that here first. So it's just the filter because there's really just one. And uh, let's call it rate limiter. So, and this registers the filter. So now let's run the application again and then see if that works. Well, I should stop by now. All right, so we open the terminal. Let me check that. So now if I call this endpoint, I can see I get the HTTP 401 because I did not specify the API key at this point. So we have to provide it at this point like this. And we see that works. So I get a pong. So let me quickly check the keys. And there's foo in it. And you can see foo is the key. And this is just the API key that I've been using. So. It's gone already because the 10 seconds have passed. So now let me try to call the endpoint more than three times. So that's one, two. Okay, and we're seeing something is wrong already. So let's check that. And that's an HTTP 500. That's not really expected. So let's quickly check here. There's nothing in. And now let's see what's going wrong. So we check the stack trace. Okay, it's got something to do with Redis. And we can see value is not an integer out of range. Good and not good. So what has happened is that we did not specify a serializer for the value. So we put an int in there, but it's not properly serialized. So what we have to do is come up with our own serializer that's taking care of the serialization and deserialization of ints. So let's do this now. I just stop the application and then we provide our int redis serializer. And that is our redis serializer for int. Um, let's implement the function. So we start with serialize. Serialize is pretty easy because we can say return t. And we use the save calls because we either return the result or null. That's fine in, this, in that case, so to byte array. So that's one way, and the other is a bit more code to write. So if bytes equals null, then return null. That's incorrect, null. Else, if it's not null, we return string bytes to int, well, it should be int, okay. And that's the serializer. So now we have to register this. And again, we're using the Redis template. So that's now the value serializer. And we provide, a, how did I call it? Int Redis serializer. So that's added now. And now let's give this another shot application is starting and uh, let's go to the terminal let's just check the number of keys uh, and I perform my request once twice three times ha too many requests so that was the fourth request and now I can see I'm still in there so let me see if I'm fast enough oh, I'll go away oh it's deleted already so let me do this again now it works fine again 200 200 200 Four two nine get foo. And we can see it here. The count is currently three, and this is why I'm currently limited, but after 10 seconds, uh, the key is removed from Redis, and I can just proceed. So this is a very simple way of adding a rate limiter. Of course, you can provide other metrics to do this. So you could also use the IP address or any other parameter that's important to you. API key usually works quite well, because then you know this is the user 
and you can just provide the limit there. And this wraps it up for this video. If you have enjoyed this, then check out this video over here. Consider subscribing, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.